Hey everybody, it is Tuesday, April 6th, 2021. My name is Lawrence and I am going to today teach how to solve the New York Times crossword. We're gonna do it with today's, uh, today's New York Times crossword. This is by Amanda Chung and Carl Nee. Uh, I'm gonna open it up here. And um, today uh, I'm gonna go quite slowly through this, at least slowly at first, and maybe I'll pick up speed as we go along. But um, basically, if you are mm, new to doing crossword puzzles or new to doing the New York Times, or you're, you know, you're not really familiar with how um, crossword puzzles are, or if uh, you feel like crossword puzzles are a little too intimidating, um, or you know, you don't get them, uh, this video is for you. Uh, I'm going to go quite slowly and just kind of um, explain how cluing works and how, how the crossword works um, in as simple terms as I can. Um, and uh, I hope that you follow along. If you are not at all, if you're a veteran to crossword puzzles, this video honestly might not be for you. Uh, if you want to watch it, great. I, I would love that. But um, it, it might be a little too slow for you if you are a veteran uh, to New York Times crosswords or to crosswords in general. But um, uh, tomorrow I'll be back to my usual videos of doing them at a, a, a bit of a faster speed and co doing commentary as I go along. So anyways, let's get into it. First of all, um, Tuesday puzzles. Uh, if you're not familiar with the New York Times system, uh, the New York Times crossword week starts on Monday and it goes till Sunday. And it is an easy puzzle on Monday or relatively easy, easy-ish puzzle on Monday, the easiest of the week basically. And they gradually get more difficult throughout the week. Uh, so Tuesday is kind of a level two here, if you will. Um, but it still should not be too tricky, hopefully. And uh, I'm just going to talk through it as we go along. Um, Tuesday puzzles do have a theme to them. Um, New York Times crosswords from Monday to Thursday always have a theme in the puzzle somewhere. Um, and I will talk more about that as we discover it. Uh, but um, for now, you don't need to worry about that. First, let's just get going. Um, first, like most basic kind of crossword clue right here at one across. This is a fill in the blank kind of crossword puzzle clue. Those are generally like the easiest ones to get, although not always because sometimes the, the blank could be more than one possible choice. Uh, but in this case, Blank Technica, a popular website with tech news, I happen to know that is Ars Technica, All right? Just fill in the blank. Um, a gardener's annoyance. So this is um, just a description of something. This is just a straightforward description of something that annoys a gardener. Uh, I don't know it yet, so I'm gonna move ahead. Actress Witherspoon, all right? Anytime they give a half of a name of someone and, and tell you like what they are, like actress, um, they're looking for the other half of the name. So uh, Witherspoon's first name is Reese. A chest muscle for short. Um, anytime the New York Times crossword wants in the answer a shortening of something or an abbreviation of something, it will be indicated in the clue. Okay, generally they want the full proper name of something uh, in the answer. However, if they say they want the short answer, it will indicate that. Uh, one way of doing that is by saying for short. Uh, so this is, oops, this is a peck, right? A chest muscle is a peck. Uh, all right, let's go over to four across and see what we have. Place for meals on wheels. A place for meals on wheels. Where would you have meals on wheels? I'm not sure where you might have meals on wheels. This is similar to gardener's annoyance. It's just giving a description of something. Uh, and it's asking for what that might be. Um, Demi with the 2017 hit, Sorry Not Sorry. This is uh, basically the same as this actress Witherspoon. It's given us half of a name and it's looking for the other half of a name. So Demi, uh, I believe this is Lovato. I think that's how you spell it. Uh, so let's look at the down clues here and see. So basically, uh, in terms of what order you solve the crossword in, there is no 
correct way to do it. There's no right or wrong way to do it. You go in any order you like. Generally, once you get a letter or two, um, it's, you know, that makes it easier to find the answer. So like, for example, here at six down, actually, let's go there because I ha it's only three letters and I have the middle letter, which is a V. So that will help us quite a bit. It should help us quite a bit. Some mobile homes for short. Now, there's two things going on here, right? We have for short again, so the same as with peck, right? It's gonna be a shortening of something. It's not going to be the full thing. The other thing that is a, a rule in crosswords or in New York Times crosswords at least, is the clue here is plural, right? It's some mobile homes with an S. So the answer must also be plural. So we know this has to end in an S and then it's gonna be a shortening of mobile homes. So RVs, right? Recreational vehicles. If it didn't have for short there, then the answer should be recreational vehicles, the full proper name. Uh, but for short means it is RVs. Let's go seven down. Animal that, despite popular belief, is usually lactose intolerant. This is just a straight description of something. Uh, what animal is usually lactose intolerant? Um, probably a cat, right? Despite popular belief means that it's something that most people think uh, is not lactose intolerant. So it's probably a cat, right? There's often cartoons of cats drinking milk, right? Uh, so let's go to eight down. Manhattan Project Subject. Uh, so what was the subject of the Manhattan Project? Uh, the atom? It was that, the Manhattan Project was the A-bomb, right? Was it just atom, maybe? We have the T here, and it's four letters. So I'm gonna guess atom. It's just a straight description clue. Nothing too tricky there. Herky-jerky as movements. Now, in this clue, um, herky-jerky uh, is an adjective, right? Parts of speech are really important in cluing in the New York Times uh, or in crosswords, right? You uh, want to try and match parts of speech. So here we have herky jerky, which is an advertisement. You could describe something as being herky jerky. In this case, uh, it has as movements. So this means specifically the use of an adjective to describe movements that matches the definition of herky jerky or matches the meaning. Herky-jerky is also kind of like a colloquial word. It's kind of a slang word a little bit or like a idiomatic word, right? It's not like proper, quote unquote, proper English. So that means that's probably an indicator that our answer in the grid is also going to be like that. It's going to be some kind of colloquial term or uh, idiomatic term uh, that describes movement. But uh, this isn't enough for me to get the answer, so I'm gonna skip it and move on. Let's go to 10 across, because that's just three letters. Org since Nixon's presidency. Now this O-R-G, uh, abbreviated, this is also, this is akin to, or the same as saying for short, like this chest muscle for short. If they have abbreviated something, in the clue, then it is fair game to assume that the answer is also going to be abbreviated. So an organization since Nixon's presidency, uh, the answer should be abbreviated because ORG uh, organization is abbreviated here. Um, I'm not sure what organization that is. It could be like CIA or FBI or something like that. Um, but I'm not sure because I'm not good with that kind of American history. <laughs> Uh, a kind of story. Uh, so this is just a straight up definition. Uh, this will be a three letter word that is um, one like genre or type of story. Um, what could that be? A love story, epic. Um, I'm not sure. I'm gonna need something to cross that with uh, to, to actually get it. 10 down is quite long. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get it. Event for antique lovers. Is that a road show? Antiques road show? R-O-A-D-S-H-O-W. No, that's too long to be road show. Uh, I'm not sure what an event, what event antique lovers might like. Crew. Uh, so this is just a straight definition or, or synonym 
uh, kind of clue. So a word that could stand in for the word crew. Um, these are where you get kind of tricky because crew could mean multiple things, right? It could be crew like um, the crew of a ship. It could be crew like rowing. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, so let's go. Mariana Trench, EG. Okay. Uh, so here we have two things going on in this, right? EG means for example, right? So the Mariana Trench is an example of whatever this answer is. Okay. Um, EG is also technically an abbreviation. So this answer might also be an abbreviation. It might not, it doesn't have to be, but it could be. Um, and so the, those two things going on in this clue that we have to be careful of. Um, right off the top of my head, I'm not really sure. It could be like a, a crevice or something like that. Um, cliff, I'm not sure. Um, so this corner is, is uh, not looking so great for me right now, but uh, we should be able to maybe get more things to try and fill it in. So I'm just gonna skip it and move on. And that is what I suggest you do when you are solving for the first time uh, a New York Times crossword. If you don't know something, don't sit there thinking about it for too long because you'll only frustrate yourself, right? Just move on, try and get things that you know, and then that will help you um, get more as you kind of spread out the things that you know. So uh, quagmire, this is gonna be a similar thing to crew. It's just a straight like definition, uh, a word that could stand in for the word qu quagmire. Um, I think a quagmire is like a tough spot or something like that. Like when, when you have a problem, that's a quagmire, is that right? I'm not actually totally sure what the definition of quagmire is. So I'm gonna skip it and move on. Uh, let's see. All right, reckon so. Now here's another New York Times crossword thing. We have a type of clue where the the clue is in quotation marks like this. This means it is, uh, you imagine that someone is saying reckon so. Yeah, reckon so. Like saying it in conversation. So this means the answer here is going to be also something that someone might say in conversation that would have the same meaning as reckon so. Okay, it's pretty similar to any of these like uh, quagmire or crew. It's gonna have be something that means the same thing, but it would be something that someone says in conversation. And the other thing about um, the New York Times, which I haven't mentioned yet and it hasn't come up yet, but the New York Times crosswords does, they don't, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> They do not indicate anywhere in the clues whether the answer is one word or two words or three words, etc. There's no indication, but it is always possible to have more than one word in the answer in the grid. Okay, that's important. Um, so if you are um, to like reckon so, could be like, I suppose that would be, um, that's a guess, right? It's something that someone would say. Reckon is kind of like country a little bit. It's a bit slangy. It's a bit colloquial, right? Reckon so. So the answer could be a bit colloquial here, right? So saying the same thing, something that means the same thing, like I reckon so, I suppose, but making it a bit slangy, a bit colloquial could be I suppose. This is just a guess. I'm not sure, but I, uh, I feel good about it. I'm going to leave it in. Now, at this point, I might go back and check one down because now I have three letters here for one down. I might go back and, and check on this again and see if I can fill it in. Gardner's annoyance, um, aphid, right? An aphid annoys a gardener. And this helps to confirm that I, I could be correct with 19 across here, right? An aphid is something that annoys a gardener, so. There we go. Three down. They're not really to blame. Uh, I didn't look at this one before. Uh, they're not really to blame. Uh, so one thing, first of all, we have they're not really to blame. They, that is a pluralization. So the answer should be plural. Okay. They're not really to blame. Uh, Scapegoats, right? Scapegoats are not really to blame. 
right? There's things that you blame, but they're not really what to blame, right? There we go. And now that pretty much confirms that I was correct with 19 across, right? ISP, um, there's, that really probably couldn't be anything else. Um, so I have been avoiding looking at 16 across, uh, but let's go ahead and look at it now. I avoided looking at it because it's, it's long. It goes all the way across. Generally, like, save the longer ones for later. Do the short ones first because they're generally easier to get. Um, that long one. Oh my gosh, girl. So this is in quotation marks again. Um, so uh, it's going to be something that someone might say in conversation that means the same thing as, oh my gosh, girl. And again, oh my gosh, um, that's a bit colloquial, right? So this could be like a colloquialism also. Um, I'm not sure what that is. So I'm just going to skip it and move on. Don't spend too much time thinking about it. The long ones are quite tough. Um, what I have not, what I've left out here is the fact that long answers, especially ones that go all the way across the grid like this. Long answers in the New York Times crossword are usually ones related to the theme, but I have no idea what the theme might be, so it's not really worth it to even think about what the theme might be at this point. So just keep going. Um, get out the blank. Get out the blank. So it's just a fill in the blank clue. Whatever could go in the blank. Um, I've heard get the lead out, but get out the blank, get out the, oh, get out the vote is a thing, right? That's like a campaign slogan. So get out the vote. We have an O in the second position here. So it could be get out the vote. At this point, I would check 23 across to see if that confirms get out the vote, right? 20, uh, sorry, 21 across, uh, that puts a T there and that, that puts it at DEET. Um, so if this makes it okay with 21 across and we have specifics in slang for 21 across, so something that means specifics, uh, but a slang version of that word and specifics is an S. So this should end in an S here, right? It should be plural. DEETs, details. That's the slang version of details, which means specifics. Perfect. All right, so that confirms to me, I think, that vote is correct. And at this point, uh, maybe I would, V is pretty unusual, so maybe that helps with 16 across. Oh my gosh, girl. Heavens, heavens to Betsy. That would make sense, right? That's something someone would say in conversation. It's a bit colloquial. It's a bit like um, quaint, uh, like, oh my gosh. And it ends with a girl's name. So, oh my gosh, girl, heavens to Betsy. There we go. That fits. Let's leave it in. All right, four down. It says a prayer over. Um, this would be, uh, so again, uh, we have says here. So the uh, four down, the clue here, and I already see what the answer is, but I, I wanna talk about the clue here for, for a second, right? Says a prayer over, um, we're going to have, the answer is going to be a verb, right? Because says a prayer over, that's an action. That's something that someone does, right? So in general, it's a verb phrase to say a prayer over something. Uh, this verb, however, in the clue is also conjugated right? It's not say a prayer over, it is says a prayer over, as in he says or she says, right? Uh, so the answer should be conjugated the exact same way. And I see that this answer is going to be bless, right? To say a prayer over is to bless, but conjugated, so it's blesses. So that is an important rule that will always be the case for New York Times crossword. Like plurals or tenses will always match in clues or answers. Uh, and maybe now we can get four across. Uh, place for meals on wheels. Is this a bar, bar cab? Bar something. Bar cab, is that a thing? I don't actually know if that's a thing. 
uh, let's, uh, since I'm not totally confident about that, I look at what it crosses with. So C5 down, what do we have there? A steak sauce brand. Steak sauce brand is A1. That is a steak sauce brand, just a straight up, you know, straightforward clue there. A brand of steak sauce, A1. Uh, so that confirms bar. And then I think this might be cab, but I'm not sure. So let's look at nine down. Herky jerky as movements. Uh, is this like bobbing? Is bobbing? I'm just imagining if, if this is bar cab, there's a B here. Bobbing. That would be an adjective, right? So we're matching the same part of speech. But that also puts MB here, which doesn't seem correct. So I don't think it's bobbing. Right? So that's another technique is uh, also when you're trying to fill in something in, if you're guessing, look at what letter combinations that guesses gives you. And MB for quagmire is probably not going to be correct. So I take it back. I'm not sure. I'm still not sure about this. I'm going to need more letters at nine down to confirm what this first one is. So I'm going to, it could be a bar car, like Meals on Wheels bar car, Rob something. But uh, I, I don't feel confident about that. So yeah, let's just move on. 22 across, we have uh yeah, in quotation marks. So it's going to be something someone says. Um, generally, it's going to match the whole phrase, right? The whole phrase, the meaning of the whole phrase is important. So it's not just yeah in quotation marks, it's a uh, yeah. So that could be like hesitation, or it could be like sarcasm, like uh, duh, like definitely, uh, yeah. Um, it could be like that. Uh, there's multiple ways that you can interpret it, and you just kind of have to figure it out. So I'm gonna need more letters here to try and figure out what that could be. So let's look at 18 down, because we know it starts with E. One who takes a bow before success rather than after. Okay. Um, this is our first clue that we've seen so far that has a question mark at the end. Um, I don't know if you noticed that, but that is important in the New York Times crossword. If it has a question mark at the end, that means there is some bit of wordplay happening. So this is not a straightforward clue. There's going to be some kind of wordplay um, or play on words happening uh, to get to connect from this clue to the answer. Um, these clues are generally a bit harder to get because of the wordplay. They're generally a bit tougher to figure out. Um, let's see if I can figure it out right now with just the E. Um, so you have to kind of, these are the ones where you have to kind of learn to bend your mind a little bit and think about which words in this clue might have more than one meaning. So one who takes a bow before success, before success rather than after. Um, it could be um, instead of bow, it could be a bow, like a bow and arrow, or like a ribbon and a bow. Um, and so one who takes a bow before success rather than after, um, could be, well, I don't know. <laughs> it could be like an archer. Um, it could be, and this is a stretch, but it could be correct. Uh, it could be Eros, as in Cupid. Eros is, I think, the the name of Cupid, right? Um, Eros takes a bow before success, and success for Cupid would be hitting someone with the bow and arrow. Um, but before he before Eros does that, he has to actually take the bow, right? It could be. Uh, I'm not super confident about that, but I think it is a definite possibility. I'm going to leave it in for now and move on because generally uh, you don't want to spend too much time thinking about these um, question mark clues because they are wordplay. They are tricky. Uh, let's go uh, see if I can get anything else yet here. Quagmire. Nope, still not sure. So uh, let's just move on. 
Yep, let's move on. 23 across. Uh, this is another long one going across, so it might be theme related, but, um, and we can see again, uh, we can see that this probably is theme related somehow. Uh, the reason I say that is because this clue is dang girl in quotation marks. The clue for 16 across was, oh my gosh, girl in quotation marks. So you can see the similarities in the clue right there. And so that means there's some connection between these. And that is what we mean when we talk about a theme in a crossword. There's going to be some clues and it's usually the long across clues, the long clues going across and the longest clue or answers going across. Those are usually the connected ones or the theme uh, answers. That's what we mean when we say there's a theme here. Um, so dang girl, um, I mean, even so, even though it is themed, like this one was pretty straightforward. Oh my gosh, girl, it was a, it's a phrase that means, oh my gosh, and ending with a girl's name. Uh, so maybe this is the same thing that ends with a girl's name. It's a phrase that means dang that ends with a girl's name. And I'm seeing it already. I think it's G's Louise. I think it's G's Louise, right? G-E-E, -E, right? G's, how, how would you spell G's Louise though, <laughs> is the question. That I'm not sure, but I know Louise, I know how to spell Louise, uh, L-O-U-I-S-E. So maybe this should be Z probably. Um, yeah, so now that's my guess. That's what I think it is. Now the next step is to look at the, what these cross with just to confirm, am I correct, right? Or do I think I'm correct? So 24 down, blank garden is probably Zen garden, right? Straight fill in the blank, right? Starts with Z, there's only so many things that could be a Zen garden. Um, 25 down, a language akin to Thai. So a language that is similar to Thai, I think that is Lao. Yeah, so I think G's Louise was correct. 26 down, ends of some exciting games for short. Uh, this is similar to this, right? Some mobile homes for short in that it is a, sh a shortening of something and it's plural. So this should end in an S. And uh, an exciting game is usually end in overtime. So OT for overtime. Uh, Persian Gulf land in brief. Uh, in brief is another way of saying for short. So this is a, another thing that's going to be a shortening of the full proper name, uh, but I don't know what land this might be. Uzbekistan, is Uzbekistan in the Persian Gulf? I'm really not sure. Uh, geography is not great. I'm trying to get better at geography, but uh, I don't know. So here I'm gonna go to 36 across and see if I can figure this out. N-O-S blank. Important part of a bloodhound would be the nose, right? A nose is important for a bloodhound. And then let's look at 30 across and see if we can get that. Northwest Airport familiarly. All right, familiarly at the end of a New York Times crossword clue means it's gonna be a nickname or a slang name or a colloquial name for it. Um, SeaTac, I think is um, for Seattle, Tacoma. I think, the, I think that airport is nicknamed SeaTac, right? So SeaTac should be it. Oh, UAE, of course, the United Arab Emirates. Um, and then in brief, right, shortened UAE. Uh, okay, can we figure out nine down now? Herky jerky as movements, um, ends in IC. So it is definitely an adjective here, right? Um, herky jerky. What is that? I was thinking like erratic or something, but it's obviously not erratic because I'm pretty sure. And I like, I'm never, well, that's not true. I am often not totally confident about things. So like always second guess, like it's okay to second guess yourself and go back and see like, wait, if, you, if I'm not sure about something, just check, check back with something that you filled in already. Wait, like is Lovato correct? Is Heavens to Betsy correct? But I'm, I'm fairly certain that they are. So erratic is definitely not right. If this is a B, 
that is nothing. <laughs> so maybe it's not B. Uh, it could be bar car. If that is a bar car. Robotic. Robotic could be like herky jerky. Mm, I can't do the robot, but yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Mm. I think that that's pretty good. So let's uh, take a look back now and see if we can fill in this corner now that we have most, most of these letters up here. Uh, quagmire, more. What word means quagmire that starts with M-O-R? I'm not sure. 22 across, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Two, two, totes, maybe, uh, yeah, like, uh, yeah, totes, could be totes, I'm gonna go with that, because I can't think of anything else that might fit there, like, totally, but totes, Oh, and this is going to be an abyss, right? So that this is an example of how just getting one more letter might might help you figure it out, right? Because here's the thing about this, is this ends in an S here, but this clue, Mariana Trench, for example, uh, this is not a plural clue. So this is going to be a singular thing. And so I was thinking like, what singular word might end in an S? And then have have be like this, have these this Y here and an S here. It's got to be abyss, right? And then we have quagmire, which is also singular, but also ends in an S. So what is this? Quagmire. Hmm. That I'm not sure. But does this help me get? any of these organization since Nixon's presidency. This is probably CIA. That's a, I thought I feel like the CIA existed since well before, right? Cause like the, no, there's gotta be other organizations. There are other organizations. NSA could be, I'm not sure. What about 15 across kind of story? Uh, this could be a fib. That's a kind of a story. Let's see, crew. Crew could also be like a verb. That's the other thing about this is it, it also has multiple meanings. It, it also has multiple parts of speech. So I'm not sure if the answer here is going to be the noun version of crew, a replacement for the noun version or a replacement for the verb version, like to staff to crew a ship or to staff a ship. Um, so that also makes these these one word uh, clues a bit tricky sometimes. Uh, but I'm not sure actually. Event for antique lovers. Oh, I see this now. An event that antique lovers might like is an estate sale. So you see, just, you just gotta keep going until you, like, you never know when just like having one more letter is gonna trigger the correct answer for you. And having that, that extra T there really helped with totes. Okay, does that help now? This must be the EPA. Did the EPA start when Nixon was president? And now I see 15 across. This is a sob story. Uh-huh. And crew is posse. And morass is a quagmire. I never would have gotten that on its own. That's not a word that I... It's a word I've heard before, but it's not a word that I would have associated with quagmire. And uh, so that is one. And that happens. Like, sometimes you just need to wait until you get everything that goes... That crosses it to fill it in. And that's how it worked here. All right, let's keep going. 28 across, a scare word. Um, so this is a word that you use to scare is gonna be boo. 
hand grenade in slang. So it's telling me right there that this answer is going to be a slang, uh, slang name for a, a hand grenade is maybe a frag. But BF doesn't look promising. However, sometimes it's worth it to check before you erase something because inseparable buds now, again, in the clue, buds, so this is where it can be a, a bit subtle, but buds is a shortening, right? Buds is a slang. It's not a proper name, or it's not a proper word, right? The proper word is buddies. But because it has buds in the clue, we, we know that this answer can be a shortening, and it is plural, so it's gonna end in S, and inseparable buds are BFFs, right? That is a shortening of best friends forever. Okay, camera setting. Um, what's a setting for your camera? F-stop, I think, is a camera setting, but I'm not totally sure. I'm gonna check with 29 down first. Approximately, that is, um, or so, right? This is something that could stand in for approximately. Um, or so, like, oh, maybe 20 or so means approximately 20, right? So F. F stop, I think is correct. Uh, let's look at 41 across. Leaving already, so soon, right? It's quotations. So it does have a question mark there, but the question mark is inside the quotation marks. That is important, right? So that means this isn't wordplay. It is just in quotations. So it's a phrase that you could say to match the meaning of leaving already. Uh, okay. Let's look at 39 down, because that's a short one. Wham! And again, in quotation marks. So this is also going to be an onomatopoeia or a sound word, and I think it's going to be pow. Um, and 35 down. With 37 down, wow girl. So this is the first one that we've seen um, that has a with. And this these come up from time to time. That means the answer for wow girl is spread out across both of these answers in the grid. So it's going to start at 35 down, uh, but 35 down alone is not going to be the answer. It's going to continue at 37 down. And you can see that at 37 down, it just says C35 down. It's just telling you, just go look at 35 down. That is the clue for this particular place in the grid. Um, those do happen from time to time. Uh, so, wow, girl, good, Golly, Miss Molly, right? I think that, that, right, because it's a quotation one and it ends in girl, it's the same. It's part of the theme going along with Heaven to Betsy, Heaven's to Betsy and G's Louise. Good golly, Miss Molly. And we have ending in a, a girl's name. Good golly, Miss Molly. That's great. Um, now here, I do see that 44 across starts with DW, so I am going to double check that really quickly and see because DW is unusual. However, inhabitants, right, ends in an S, so it's plural, so that confirms that Miss Molly is probably correct. And um, an inhabitant could be a dweller, right? Right, so it's dwellers. Good, this is good. Uh, so a fill in the blank w uh, of a quote to blank by silence when we should protest makes cowards out of men. Um, I don't know this quote, so I'm not sure what this is. It could be maybe sit to sit by silence or to say by silence when we should protest to it could maybe sit. I'm not sure, but I'm going to leave it blank for now. Let's try and fill in more things that we can. A figure in Final Fantasy. Um, so figure could mean two different things. It could mean like a, a figure as in like a person or something like that. It could also mean number, right? Or, um, or symbol of some kind. Uh, so in Final Fantasy, this might be mana because mana is a thing in Final Fantasy but I am not totally sure about that. So I am gonna leave that blank also and come back to it. Um, grain storage spots. Now this should end in an S cause it's spots. And then places where you store grain is gonna be silos. 
Yeah, I feel confident about that. 40 down only needs one more letter. So let's look at that. A follower of yes or no. All right. Anytime it says follower, that, that means it is literally a word that follows. It's not a, a follower as in like a person. It can mean a follower as a person. For example, a follower of Allah or something. I don't know. Um, could be like a Muslim, right? Um, but uh, in this case, I know that follower of yes or no, this is going to be a word that follows yes or no. So yes, sir, no, sir. You can have sir following the word yes or the word no. 43 across, supports for choirs. Uh, so supports, this is a bit of a, what we might call a misdirect, um, where supports for choirs, uh, it's, it's a very mild misdirect. It's not a very tough one or tricky one, but support could have multiple meanings here, right? Um, in this case, um, support is not like a, a person who supports or an organization that supports. It's a literal physical support. So something that holds up choirs. And this is going to be risers. And again, supports with an S. So it's plural. Now we have a few letters here. So let's look at 32 down and see if we can get that. Composer Stravinsky. Here we have half the name. So we need the other half of the name. I believe it's Igor Stravinsky. And... Uh, untouchable agent. Uh, untouchable agent. So untouchable is in quotes. So that means uh, from the movie Untouchable. And I'm, I'm not sure. But here we have to blank by silence. We have the SI here now. So I'm guessing it's probably sit. Sit kind of makes sense in the context of the quote. So I think it's safe to guess that it's sit. I can't imagine what other letter might go here to finish this word. To sip by silence doesn't make sense. To sin by silence? I could be sin, right? To sin, as in saying that silence is a sin in this case. Um, but I feel like sit makes more sense. To sow by silence doesn't really make sense in this context. I feel like sit makes the most sense. So I'm going to... <laughs> Hi, bud. I'm going to put Sid in. And now I also see 37 across a figure in Final Fantasy. It's not mana, right? Um, this is this would be a mage, right? A mage is a, a person in Final Fantasy. Um, so I'm guessing Agent Tess was an agent in the movie Untouchable. I'm hoping. <laughs> um, well, We'll come back to that if we need to, um, but that's my guess for now. Place for a sensor in tennis uh, is a net, maybe net something. Where would you put a sensor in tennis? Net line could be net line. I'm not quite sure, so I'm going to leave that and come back. Forty five across or forty five down. Facilities in England. Oh, see now this is a. A big misdirect. So facilities, um, you think this is plural, right? Uh, so the answer should be plural. And I've been doing that the whole time. But facilities can also be singular when you are referring to the toilet, as in say, I need to go use the facilities. You're not saying I need to use multiple toilets. You're saying I need to use the toilet. So facilities in this case, it, it can be singular sometimes. So, um, this is a bit of a tricky one, but when it says in England, or if there's some kind of indication of where the answer is, um, it, or where the clue is, um, that means it would be what they might call it in that place. Um, and sometimes they do this with languages as well. We haven't seen that today yet, but sometimes it might ask you like the in Paris and that then the answer would be uh, un or la or something. It would be the word the, but in that language, right? In this case, in England, so it would be what the British word for toilets might be. And that is the loo, right? So I need to go use the facilities. I need to go use the loo. It's just an act. It's just an act. 
Um, this one, I'm actually a little bit surprised this doesn't have a question mark on it. I think this is a play on words a bit. Um, because the phrase, it's just an act. Although maybe it's not, this could be, uh, this could be two things actually in my head. Um, so to say it's all an act means it's all a lie, right? So it could be lie. And actually the fact that it's not in a question mark makes me think that maybe lie is actually the correct answer. The other thing I was thinking was maybe a law because you might say a law is an act, right? Um, or laws are called acts, right? Uh, like the Affordable Care Act is a law, right? But because it doesn't have a question mark, I'm gonna guess maybe it's just lie. But here's what we do to confirm that. We look at the across ones and see a little croaker. Oh, I think it is law because a little croaker could be a toad, a little thing that croaks. Let's double check with 56 across. Long horns, for example, are cows, right? Similar to, this is similar to the Mariana Trench run, run, right? It's just an example of an abyss, right? So long horns are examples of cows. And again, like the Mariana Trench is a singular, so abyss is singular, it's not abysses. Um, in this case, long horns is plural, so it is cows plural for the answer. Uh, okay, we've got a few more letters here for 42 down. Do we know what this is? Place for a sensor might be the net net cord. I'm still not totally confident in that, so I'm gonna come back to that. How about 43 down? Jupiter has a great one. Uh, Jupiter has a great red spot. And great is just in quotation marks there because it is part of the name of the great red spot. Uh, okay, 51 across. Newsstand display for short. Um, so it's going to be a shortening of something. Um, a newsstand might display magazines. And so that's the first thing that came to mind when I saw the M there. And so since it's for short, I'm gonna guess it's mags. 57 across, place for a pizza. Where might you have a pizza? Place for a pizza. Interesting, I'm not sure what that is. Let's look at the other side, 47 across. Actually, no, let's stay in this corner, sorry. I'm gonna stay in this corner and see if I can, um, sorry to jump around like that. Uh, let's see if I can get some more. To no blank, fill in the blank, to no avail. That's not too tricky place for a pizza oven, right? You might find a pizza in an oven. Okay. Bye. Very beginning. Um, the what? Genesis, the, oh, no, this is a misdirect. This is similar to follower. Follower of yes or no. Well, I think, hold on. I'm not totally sure, but I think follower of yes or no uh, just means a word that comes after yes or no right very beginning beginning could also mean something that comes before um, so beginning is is often used or like start of or um, you know before um, is something that uh, can be used in crossword clues to indicate a word that comes before so something that comes before very this this could also be uh, but I'm not totally sure uh, so I'm going to skip it. An unattractive facial expression is a sneer. This is just a straight description of what the answer is. Uh, now we have a lot of letters here, so hopefully we can figure this out. A food critic's asset. This is a straight up description as a palette, right? Food critic has a, a good palette. That is something that, um, helps them. And 63 across, do a favor is uh, oblige, right? Again, this is, you gotta match the, the part of speech, right? Do a favor, that's an action, that's a verb phrase. So the answer should be a verb, right? And it's oblige. And 65 across, I can already see, just before I even look at the clue, 
just blocking the clue from my sight. I'm betting this is Taylor. Uh, swift to soar to the top of the charts, right? With a question mark, so it's a play, it's a double meaning of, of uh, swift, right? It's not fast soaring, it is a literal swift meaning, and it's giving half the name, so we need the other half, and it's Taylor. Um, before I type it in, I'm gonna double check with 61 down. Defense organization with a question mark. Uh, ABA. Is that like American Baseball Association or something like that? I'm not actually sure what, what this is referring to, but it's with a question mark. So it's not like defense, like um, D Department of Homeland Security or something like that. It's it's gonna be playing on the word defense. So I'm guessing it's a sports reference because there, there's also defense in sports, but I'm not sure what ABA is. Is it basketball, baseball? I don't know. Very beginning. Oh, I was wrong about beginning. Get go is just a, a straight up, like the meaning of get go is the very beginning from the get go from the very beginning. Um, so it was not a th something that goes before a very, uh, but still that is possible. So it's good to know. It's good to keep that in mind. All right. Uh, problem that's holding things up. This is probably a snag, right? A snag is a problem that holds things up. Fakes, I'm not sure, but it should end in an S, right? Because we want to match the conjugation, right? Fakes, it's not fake, it's fakes. Um, so actually this could be two. This could be a verb or it could be a noun, right? What a bunch of fakes, what a bunch of phonies. Um, or it could be like fakes, like you fake, uh, feign to do something. Uh, scam, maybe. Could be scams, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna leave that blank. Gently sting as with cold. Um, this is, so, specifically something that uh, you would say when cold gently stings you. And I'm guessing this is nip at, right? So like the cold nips at you, it means the cold gently stings you. So gently sting is to nip at. 49 down, welcome in Waikiki. So this is similar to the facilities in England, right? It is what they would say in England, Lou is what they would say in England to mean facilities, right? What would they say in Waikiki to mean welcome? They would say aloha. 55 across city, whose first two letters are its state's postal abbreviation. And this is, I think another Hawaii reference. I think Hilo is a city in Hawaii, and HI is the state postal abbreviation of Hawaii. So I think it's Hilo. So fakes, this might be shams. I feel pretty good about shams. It's all a fake, it's all a sham. Uh, so I'm gonna put that in now, and then we'll confirm it by checking the acrosses. New York Theater on the National Register of Historic Places with the. So anytime it says the, it, it means like the is part of the name of the theater. Um, so, but they've left it out of the answer. So it would be the Apollo, I think. Uh, romantic composer Gustav, and uh, it's given us half the name. We need the other half of the name. I believe it is Mahler. Uh, let's try 59 down, because that's a short one. Dungarees brand, the brand name is Lee, I think, Lee Dungarees. And I think this is indeed net cord and 64 across, let's double check. Remained is stayed and we're matching the tense of the verb here. We're matching the conjugation, right? It's remained in past tense, right? ED, so stayed with the ED. Oh, and this happens sometimes. The puzzle is filled, but something is wrong. Um, I'm gonna guess, just because this is where I was the least confident. I, I didn't know this one going across and I didn't know this one going down. So these are the kinds of places, this is where you start. If you have, if you get that notification where it's, you filled it in the grid, but it's not correct. Um, those are the places where you go first, right? Where you weren't sure about the two, the place where two things that you weren't sure about crosses. Um, I'm pretty sure about the SI, 
right? Estate sale, I think is right. Igor, I think is right. I'm pretty sure about Mage. I'm pretty sure about Silos. I'm pretty sure about Riser. So it's really just this one letter here that I'm not totally sure about. Um, so this could be Sin. Uh, Nest doesn't really make sense, but it could be Sin. I'm gonna try that. And there it is. We've done it. And that is how you solve a New York Times crossword. This was an extremely long uh, video. If you watched it the whole way through, thanks so much. I hope this really helped you to, to feel like maybe you can do it, right? Um, and I hope that I helped to explain like how the cluing works. There are some rules for how cluing works and it takes some time to get used to them. So um, I suggest you just try them. Um, if you are beginner to New York Times crosswords, try the Monday and Tuesday puzzles. As Like I said, those are the easiest of the week. I would also recommend trying um, puzzles at other places. For example, like the USA Today. Those are pretty uh, approachable puzzles. They are uh, not too tricky. They can be tricky, but they're, they're generally uh, in the range of like Monday to Wednesday level, I think, on the New York Times. Um, they can get a bit tougher, but uh, often they are around that range. So th those are pretty approachable. Um, just start trying them. The more you do them, the more you get used to them. They are pretty tricky at first. And sometimes you need to think laterally and, and bend bend your mind a little bit to, to get some of these, especially the ones with wordplay. But there are rules and there are things that you will see again and again and again. And the more you do them, the more you get used to seeing them and noticing them quicker and quicker. Um, so it really can be tricky at first, but um, trust me when I tell you, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. And so just hang in there and keep doing it. Um, thanks so much for watching. I do this, uh, I solve puzzles on this channel Monday through Thursday, the New York Times crosswords. And I do a live stream on Sunday as well, and you can solve together with me on Sunday. So if you have not already subscribed to this channel, please do and um, you'll get notified when those live streams happen and when the new videos are uploaded. And that is it for today. I will be back tomorrow with my usual um, commentary as I solve the puzzle uh, a bit faster. Thanks, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.